uh, counseling, they have prayer, they have uh, they have a lot of um, uh, uh, you know, support that they are offering. If you wish to uh, really know more about uh, this Deborah Rice movement, you can definitely visit the website that I have put uh, www If you wish to be part of this Deborah Rice movement, do get in touch with me. I will definitely connect you uh, to this uh, uh, movement. I'm sure you will be blessed. So without taking much time, I request uh, now Dr. Lata Christi to take over and start our session, Battling with Fears in Uncertain Times. Yeah. Today, it's my privilege to be among you women to speak on um, this important topic and uh, it's about fear. It's this fear that catches, it's not only for women, it will be useful for many men and even for youths, it's especially useful. So let me start with a prayer. Precious Father, Father in heaven, there are people here in this morning, Lord Jesus, who are living in terrible fears and Lord just now flooded with fears and Father, as we pray, Lord, that you will show them how to get victory and how to overcome those fears, Lord Jesus. Break those chains of fear. And Holy Ghost, come down this morning, now in a special way. And Lord, we may hear and understand your word and be delivered from fear. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I believe fear is one of the most destructive forces on the face of the earth. Fear is a feeling like an alarm going off within us, warning us of something that is going to happen. And it is that feeling of being threatened by something that may or may not happen, even that is beyond our control, that brings anxiety. That is the most terrible thing of fear. And you lose your sleep, you lose your daily routine. So fear overtakes you. You know, due to the terrible second wave we just encountered, the moment we walk on the roads or sit near our windows, we can hear sirens of the ambulance passing by continuously and we wonder who is going to count his last breath. Our heart gets burdened. Should we sit idle at home to win over our fight to stay alive? Or should we run to some island where no other human being is there? What should we do? However, as one of the statistics said, People who died of corona is almost equal to that of who died of road accidents or suicide or depression last three months. But when we hear, hear a lot of people getting infected and watch those going through difficult treatment, our heart is consumed with fear. Even the possibility of getting into some accident or the possibility of losing our job or losing our relationship brings fear. From childhood, if I can be defined by one word, that is fear. I can be defined by that word fear. I feared everything. Uh, we are seven of us, I'm the first, and all of them used to treat me so well, and I have three brothers and three sisters. Um, I can never be alone. I was scared of darkness, and I was scared even to go to my first floor if my mom asked me to take something, because uh, when I switch off the light, the darkness comes and I jump down thinking that something is trying to hold me off. And even in the night, I get scared, get up in the night crying as though somebody is suffocating me. I was even scared to talk to boys. First time when I entered the engineering college, one of my seniors asked my name and I started to cry loudly and he ran away because um, I was so scared of everything. Uh, so that defined me. You know, that is why uh, now, when I just think last uh, 15 years, I have been almost alone, how it is possible. It's just, I, I think I'm qualified to speak on the subject of battling fear. Um, and I'm not sure it is God who has given, I've never thought that I'm going to speak on that. Before speaking about battling fear, I would also like to tell the good side of fear in the case of real danger. Sometimes we might be on real danger. That time it's good to get fear. And so that we can try to get rid of ourselves from that place. For example, you are in a terrible physical abusive relationship or you are on the verge of starving to death or you are in the close proximity to a rapist or a murderer. These are some of real threat. 
focus on creating safety by informing your friends, police, or like getting yourself out of the dangerous situation. So we are not talking about the real fear, real danger. But otherwise, we know that most of the fear is imaginary, it is anticipatory, and that some bad thing is going to happen. And uh, such fears don't come from God. Paul said, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In fact, fear is Satan's most powerful weapon against God's children. Many times he makes us to disobey God, makes us to go away from our creator as he did to Adam and Eve. When Adam disobeyed God's heart, you know, God was so broken. He disobeyed God and God's heart broke and he called out, Adam, Adam, where are you? You know, what did Adam answer? He said, I heard your voice and I'm afraid. You know, the first word that afraid came when man disobeyed God. The voice of the Lord that gave so much happiness to Adam gave him fear. He was waiting for that voice to walk in the Garden of Eden every morning. And now that same voice, where are you, gave him fear. You know, that is why Satan does that. He just brings in some sin. You know, there is a beautiful plant called sundew in Australia. It has a beautiful leaf and colorful flower. And so the insect comes to sit on that. It has a dew on that. And, you know, the dew is like a gum sort of thing. So the insect sits. So when it tries to go away, the, the leaves flutter more and it tries to absorb the insect again. So many of the insects get trapped and the plant eats it. That same way, sin attracts us so much. And using that, Satan makes us to move away from God. And then he takes our total control and then he gives us fear. You know, for me personally, Isaiah chapter 41, 10 to 11 is the most powerful verse in the word of God when it comes to fear because of the awesome promise. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing. What a beautiful promise. You know, we are scared of what people will talk about us, what people will do against us. But God is telling, whomever is talking against you or doing things against you, they will be ashamed. I will fight your battle. They will be as nothing. Why are you fearing? Fear not is a common reminder in the word of God. And that we can trust our heavenly father. Because our heavenly father, if he fights the battle, he's the creator of the whole universe. And he can protect us from any harm. He will calm the storms in our mind and in our hearts and in our life. All he asks us is to turn our eyes from fear to him, fear to faith. When faith is a fear and faith are exactly opposite. Right now, are you in fear? Are you always fighting with your fearful thoughts? Are you struggling to get those anxious thoughts out of your heart? Do you feel controlled by them? Fears in our lives have tremendous consequences. So let me share my screen and I'm going to speak to you about how fear can overtake us. So battling fear. Let us see what are the things we can find out so that we will, at the end of the session, we should have the strength and the power of God to come out of all our fears. And I pray that this will happen. You know, I'm going to speak on what are the consequences of fear? What are the types of fear? What are the methods to combat fear? And a few examples from my life. Um, so let us see. So the first impact of fear is on, our, on your health. It gives rise to anxiety, burnout. You feel so tired all the time, mood swings. Fear is linked to cardiovascular disease, hypertension, digestive disease, headaches, skin disorders, and many things. Why? Because your body is related to your emotions. You know, there is one part of the brain, I'm not going to go in detail, it's called amygdala, it's called lizard brain. 
It's a collection of cells near the base of your brain where your emotions are giving meaning, remembered. Why sometimes you remember things what happened so many years before and that is attached to responses. You know why it is attached to responses? It automatically activates. It knows how to process the strong emotions because this is the key. This plays your strong emotions like fear, pleasure. And so what happens is it triggers the body's fear response. You know, it activates that response. These are the three response. Either you fight back or you uh, uh, run away from that or you just freeze. All three are not good. Many times it's good if it is a real fear. But if it is an imaginary fear, it's not good. We always move to the high arousal state and uh, our brain sends stress hormones preparing our body to fight or run away. So all the time we are just filled with stress hormones and the brain become hyper alert. And when the brain becomes hyper alert, pupil, pupils dilate, the bronchi dilate, the breathing accelerates, heart rate and blood pressure increases. You know, um, recently, just two days back in my apartment is full of monkeys. And I forgot and opened the window. And uh, suddenly I'm just sitting and working on my PC. Suddenly one monkey, one big monkey sitting next to me because next to my other side, a big bunch of fruits were there. So it wanted to take it. So it has come down through that small hole. Somehow it has gone and it is standing next to me. I shouted in high pitch. I think its uh, body's fear response got triggered. F a flight. And so it ran away how it came back. So, uh, so that this is the way many times we see dogs. When you see dogs, we get so scared. When we see um, a snake, we get scared and we try to freeze or we run away or we try to fight with that back. You know, um, the, con the next consequence of fear is your potential remains unused. You know, if you ask me what is the greatest uh, wealthiest thing in the whole world, I would never say it is the oil fields of Saudi Arabia or people who have big, big um, bank accounts, but it is the graveyard where your potential goes untapped. The songs that were supposed to be sung, but never sung. The poems that were supposed to be written, but never returned. You know why it happens? The books, so many people had talent to write books but because of fear, they never wrote. So your potential remains untapped. Fear kills your dream. When I was asked by God to write the book, When the Flame Flickers, I never wanted to write the book. I was, first of all, didn't know how to write a book. Suddenly God is putting this thought in me to write a book. I later understood God wanted to heal my emotions and he made me to write that book. It took so many years. I used to throw that book. God, I can't write. I don't know how to publish, how to write. Finally, at the end, when it came out and it was forwarded by even Kiran Bedi and many other people, I understood God can use anyone to do anything. You know, when we don't use our potential, um, we lose it. You know, the, you have heard about this story of blind Mexican tetra fish. This fish, if it is um, in a normal water, um, what happens is it has eyes, but when it is in a cave, in a dark cave, it loses its eyes. How? So people are wondering why suddenly it becomes blind. So when they try, because in a cave, in a dark environment, there are no predators and there are plenty of food available all the time. So what happens is this uh, uh, sockets, wherever once the eye was there, that gets covered by some um, material. And then uh, later it becomes so blind, it becomes full of, filled of fat tissues. So the eye place, wherever the eye is supposed to be there, is covered by fat tissues and it becomes blind because it's no use and it can conserve the energy. That's why um, this fish some, uh, loses its eye. Sometimes, many times, because of fear, we, we are scared to write something. We are scared to take a new initiative. We are scared to get a new job. We are scared to even run away from abusive environment. We waste our time in this world in fear. You know, this Rabindranath Tagore has written a beautiful poem. 
spring has passed summer has gone winter is here and the song i meant to sing is still unsung i spent my day stringing and unstringing my instrument don't die with your music in you do it something how can you do it only if you come out of your fear so let's now go to the next point what are the types of fear and how can you come out because better take notes and sit and just make it as a thought process where i have gone wrong and how can i correct myself you know anticipated fear is false evidence appearing real imagination play a major role i might lose a loved one the fear of accidents a fear of contracting diseases you know i used to get all the time this anticipated fear whenever somebody in my house goes out and they don't come for a little more time my heart beats fast i keep calling them when my children were young whenever they come late i used to follow them up and you know once that that because i used to get so much fear my son even didn't tell once he fell down from the bus and he got little scratch and uh, he went and cleaned himself put the dress inside put some other dress on the top and came home and didn't tell me after one week he's telling because i used to get so tensed up tensed up of everything so that's why you should never have this anticipated fear and the cory ten boom said worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow it empties today of its strength you know if you don't some people are all the time feeling so dead i don't have any strength in my body in my mind because of fear and worry and anxiety fear of other perception many in our uh, my friends when i tell them to speak out they say what others will think they will gossip about me even i was like that i was so scared of the world i was thinking what others will think of me what others will think they might not approve it and so all the time i was defining myself based on others thoughts about me and never i had a dream never i had a vision i was living in fear and i never lived out my dream till i became 40 years and you know such and then in 2004 march i met jesus on a deathbed in ventilator i was i i was doing my phd in iasc and i contracted a severe pneumonia and i had to be put on ventilator i was so angry on god because he never answered my prayer for 20 long years i thought at that time so i was so angry i thought if god exist he might not be good and finally in that ventilator he revealed himself to me i heard a voice i am giving you new life three times and somebody was all of uh, i was feeling that someone is surrounding me all the time his presence i felt i came home something was telling me to read the bible the bible changed me you know i he gave me new dreams he gave me a dream that i've never dreamt earlier so all the things he gave and he himself executed so when we <clears throat> stop worrying about what others will think of us we can move forward fear of unfamiliar we know sometimes we avoid uncertainty we start want to start a new business want to get into a new at the age of 40 when i started to do phd i was so scared is it possible i have my two little children i have to cook all the days even if i go out i used to cook for five days put it in the fridge and go and i used to teach them and i used to uh, help them to do everything so with all these things with my office work how can i do a phd all the things were so uh, giving me a lot of fear but still i wanted to show that um, because in those days some of some um, uh, one of my colleague was commenting that ladies used to mug up and study that's why they come to good position so i want to get into a good institution like indian institute of science where they give open book exam and unless you understand you cannot write so i tried in indian institute of science two times um, in the field of engine uh, electronics i have never got it and the third time when i tried i got in aerospace i felt this is a totally different subject it is an unfamiliar subject and i had to sit with 20 years old boys and girls who finished aerospace from iit chennai and others and god helped me to study that and even i got a grade in some of the subjects so um when we come out of the fear of the unfamiliar we can achieve success you know there is an antelope called impala 
you know, the impala can jump a feet off uh, 10, 30 feet uh, in the horizontally and 10 feet high. But you just put a three feet wall and all the antelopes will never jump because if it does not know where its feet will land, it will just stand there. It should know where its feet will land. So that same manner, this fear of unfamiliar, how can I do this? How can I move out of this place? How can I do this? All these questions make people to remain in that stagnant position for a long time. So come out of your fear of unfamiliarity and fear of failures, fear of past failures. Focus in the present because all the time past comes to you. The rejections, what you got, even I used to feel earlier, all the rejection, those words used to come often to me. Often I used to get those words and the past failures. I fail again, there is no use, there is no use of life. What is, I, I don't know how will I face my future. My future looked blank. And finally, you know how the past failures, how I could overcome. I started praising God. God, those rejections made me who I am today. Through those rejections, you became so closer to me. Through those pains, you are my everything. So those sort of affirmations and those sort of faith statements helped me through it all. God is so good. He made me to tell all those statements amidst tears, amidst pains. I used to repeat, but God helped me. You know, fear, the next is fear due to ungodly ways. When we live our own way, ignoring God's principles, you know what happens? We move away from God. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus Christ comes to give an abundant and overflowing, everlasting life. That's why he died for our sake on the cross. And when he was hanging there three hours, when, the, when his father's presence was removed, he even cried out, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? For you and for me, he took up that difficulty. You know, when we move away, there are a lot of curses given in Deuteronomy 28. And you can read that. It is so better let us not move away from God. Let's not get into ungodly ways. Let us not get into idolatry. Idolatry is not only about um, worshipping something. It's also about keeping something else higher, more giving more priority than God. So let us come back to God and let us come out of fear. So let me just give you finally a few thoughts on how to battle fear. Challenge the thoughts that creates fear. Some identify your stresses. You know, my daughter-in-law, she used to get so scared if she sees a dog far away and she used to run the other side. Because she runs, the dog used to come. So um, this is her stress because a uh, dog. So like that, you identify your stress. And then you start speaking, is this dog really a threat? Is it really going to uh, uh, bite me? So remind your mind and bodies that you are safe. You know, recently, just one week back, when I, um, uh, just uh, a month back, um, my son was telling me to do this cholesterol test. And when I did, I found it has uh, increased to such a high extent, 290 total cholesterol. So he was giving me all sort of scary things that you might get um, attack, heart attack, all such things if you don't take the medicine. So because I often forget taking medicine, he was giving me a lot of advice on heart attacks. So recently when I went to the dentist and uh, for my uh, last teeth, some problem, he started, he took a laser to cut my gum. When I saw the laser, he said, I'm going to cut your gum. I didn't know what happened. Suddenly my heart started beating like anything, such a fast beat and I could not even sit. I thought I'm getting heart attack. I told him might be I'm getting heart attack. My cholesterol is high. I'm started to imagine this and that I'm connecting because of fear of that laser treatment and which is going to cut my uh, gum. I got so scared and that fear started this making me to beat, my, my heart to beat fast. Then after some time, when he told me to relax, take a deep breath, and I started praying, God, you are sitting next to me. Whatever happens, you are going to do that procedure. And then I understood that God is so close to me. That helped me to come out of my fear. So reassuring that you are God's masterpiece. 
that is very important see i focused on negative outcomes i focused on i might get heart attack and instead of that i can start thinking of the wonderful outcome it might be solved this pain will go soon so that is a way we need to come out challenge every thought that creates fear and replace it with godly thoughts and you know knowledge of the love of god the character of god the god of the universe loves us he we are so valuable than anything else for him he said that in malachi i have loved you when but the people said how have you loved you how have you loved us the people said because the people never thought the god that god of the universe could love him but he really showed dramatically 800 years back to a prophet called hosea he hosea acted out as love he was speaking to the northern kingdom of israel he said that that he god said told him go and marry a prostitute a lady who will sell herself for prostitution he married her he brought in three children and jezreel and uh, lo lo ami and uh, you can't even name them loruhama and lo ami so in the last child's name loruhama meaning is no more mercy so after that she started and sold herself out and god told hosea go and bring her back go and pay money and get her back you know hosea was a great prophet he, people might be listening to him they might be wondering what is it your wife was there on the road and now she is with you so how come a holy man like you marry an unholy lady like her so hosea was telling yes i'm waiting for this question you know how can a holy god like him love people like you unholy people like you and that was the demonstration god demonstrated his love through hosea and you know after that like another 200 years later ezekiel came and ezekiel came and he spoke to the southern kingdom and in ezekiel 16 you can read god telling to israel when i passed by you again i saw you as a little baby you were among the bushes nobody was there even to cut your umbilical cord i i took mercy on you i i took you i cared for you and i just covered you and i loved you and i, I took you as my own and i called you mine so god was saying how much i loved you and again ezekiel was demonstrating with all these things that people are telling when god says i have loved you the last chapter of the old testament how have you loved us that is the way sometimes people gets hardened their heart gets hardened but you know when you know the love of god you can face anything how did daniel face the lions den he knew he was all the time closer to god he was three times praying and he was so enjoy so much enjoying god and when the king was uh, told that he had to put daniel in lions den king was so feeling very sad but daniel never felt sad he knew that god will stand for him he happily entered the lions den and god closed the mouth of the lion so dear are you worried of somebody like that lion they are going to put you in the lions den just remember the god the character of god the love of god god can do anything nothing is difficult for him why david could stand before goliath david knew that no matter whatever big he is no matter how great goliath is the lord the god whose name is so great is coming in that name so because he is coming in that name the name of the lord he can um, overcome any demon any uh, um, in a big giant you are coming against me with sword and spear but i am coming against you in the name of the lord whom you defy why he could do that because he might have studied in exodus the character of god the lord god is compassionate gracious slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness you have such a god who loves you so much and this god will deliver me that's why even when the boys are put in the pond of pond is burning furnace they they never got scared and god walked with them you know there is no need to fear when we know the love of god the knowledge of the wisdom of god the intricate design of the universe the universe is so beautifully designed scientists are wondering even atheistic scientists are wondering fred hoyle said 
there should be a super intellect should a monkey with physics chemistry and biology who is that super intellect even stephen hawking said what is that that breathes fire into that equation why the universe is expanding at the critical expansion rate if it is small by one part and one quintillion and the whole universe would have crumbled so you just you look at your dna 3.1 billion bits of data in just a small dot dna is a beautiful complex day. when you look at the dna you can see the mind of god so beautifully designed it has a instruction code of how to build and maintain you so when you know this god you will never fear the disciples feared when there was a great storm and jesus was walking on the sea amid storm um, peter he made peter to walk on the storm but when peter's faith went always he saw the uh, big wave his faith became so small and his fear became so big that's why faith and fear are extremity we should always hold on to faith on god so now let us see about this fear of the lord how to be aware of the presence of god and what how can we meditate on the word of god and i will end my session i've given you so many helpful bible verses and i uh, request you that all of you should go through that and memorize each and everything it's so important these are the verses that can help us so let us come to the last three the fear of the lord and then the presence of god and how meditating on the word of god can help us you know if we desire that i will live in the way what i want to live then we will always get into fear because proverbs 9 and 10 says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom when we remove fear of the lord from our mind we need to fear for everything else fear kills our faith and faith drives out fear so now the the perfect love casts out fear what is the meaning of that when we know god loves us so much he took all the judgments on the cross there is no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus as given in romans 8:1 we are so sure even if i die that is it's not a eternal it's end it's i will see jesus i will live forever that removes the fear perfect love on the lord and understanding his create uh, nature removes every fear but in the last days people feared isaiah 24:17 to 18 says fear and pit and snare are upon you o inhabitants of the earth and it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit so now we are in the last days so the prophet isaiah sees that in the last days people are living in fear and despair and there's so much trouble so now you people who are having the lord with you if you don't speak to them if you don't reveal the presence of god in you who is going to help them there are people who are in constant fears and so because of godlessness because of idolatry so let us remember perfect love removes every fear and let us be bold and go before the world let people see these people are someone different they have come to turn the world upside down the next is meditating on the word of god you know this is so important i have given bible verses to memorize why you know satan on the last day satan comes against the bride of jesus bride is a church but what did jesus say jesus said let not your hearts be troubled let it not be afraid no matter what the devil tries to send it do not fear my little flock all through matthew mark luke and john you hear jesus telling do not be troubled my little flock today the holy spirit is telling to each and every one of you do not be afraid but you know sadly many christians are living in fear every day because they don't spend time with the word of god hebrews 4:12 says the word of god is living and active it has dynamic efficiency you know we read it sporadically we never knew there is a voice behind the word we always separate the voice from the word that tragic separation of the voice from the word makes us to read it as any other book it's not any other book god is speaking this uh, every day whenever you open it the same verse can be you might be reading next time but god might be telling a different thing to you so beautifully you know scripture is a dynamic story 
the starting with the story of creation, the story of fall, the story of a God who entered into a covenant with Abraham, with Moses, the story of Exodus, the story of the rise and fall of kings and the beautiful wisdom of Psalm. And when you come to the New Testament, when the word becomes a man, when God becomes a man, he comes and speaks you to you on the Sermon on the Mount. And then the heart of the gospel, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and then the power of Holy Spirit acting through the, his people. And finally, you come to the awesome mystery of the revelation, the lamb upon the throne. That is the big picture. And you cannot read it sporadically or selectively. So, you know, the, uh, one story I wanted to say in Pentagon, um, when the uh, plane was striking it, uh, there was an officer called Isaac Hoopy. And he had taken his dogs to the veterinarian. And when a radio broadcast was shouting um, that a plane has struck the building, Hoopy was just only 38 years old, he used to play guitar and songs for a band. He ran to the scene. He started to pull out the victims and from the debris. But finally, he thought so many people are everywhere uh, lying under the debris. He started to cry out, head towards my voice, head towards my voice. And you know, from that building, whomever heard, heard his voice, is there anybody heard towards my voice? So those people heard his voice and then they all came out. Though he died because of the suffocation, he could bring many people out. Might be you are not in that pentagon. A plane might not have crashed in your home or somewhere, but might be you're feeling trapped in fear or you're trapped in your singlehood, trapped in your loneliness, trapped in your marriage or trapped in something in your job. You have lost your sense of purpose. Head towards the voice of God. He's calling you through the word of God. He wants to speak to you through the word of God. Uh, he gives you confidence and that helps you to come out of fear. You know, he is the anchor. The word of God is the anchor. The last I wanted to finish it by, um, by going to the very important thing, spiritual ramp. Just five minutes, I'll try to finish the presence of God. David says in Psalm 23, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. And finally, he says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him, saved him out of all his troubles. You know, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. That's why perfect love casts out fear. Fear of the Lord removes the real fear. Lord, the Lord and angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him. I wanted to tell, take you to a story king in, uh, given in two kings, Elijah, uh, uh, Elisha and his servant. You know, the king of uh, Syria was surrounding the mountain with his troops. Um, when, uh, whenever he used to pitch his army, Elisha will send uh, information to the king that this person is here. So the king of Syria used to get scared. Is there some spy with us? And then they said, there is one man called Elisha. He knows even what you talk in the bedroom. So that man got so scared and let us go and catch Elisha. So he sends all his armies and everything is surrounding Elisha's place. And early morning, Elisha's servant opens his eyes and looks outside and he sees so many armies of the king and with horses surrounding his place. And he cries, oh, my Lord, we are gone. You can read that in 2 Kings 6, 8 to 22. Oh, my Lord, we are gone. What shall I do? What shall we do? You know, what did Elisha say? Do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Elisha prayed, Lord, open the eyes of this gentleman. And the Lord opened his eyes. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. You know, Elisha was surrounded by heavenly chariots. The king can send earthly chariots, but God sent his armies. You know, the scientists have found many dimensions. We don't know where is the spiritual world, but they are right now here. You cannot look at them. A four-dimensional being uh, can see a three-dimensional being, but a three-dimensional person cannot see. So we don't know. We are surrounded by um, spirit forces, but well, we should not worry about that. We have a God of angel armies. And so we, we, if he opens his eyes, you know, Bible clearly says the Satan has blinded your eyes. 
it's not only for unbelievers it's even for believers satan has blinded the eyes that we don't have a god who is full who has the angel power with him when jesus was on the cross he said if i just give one uh, snack of my hand one tip of my hand i can get so many angels to come and fight on my behalf but for your sake because i want to redeem the humanity i want to, you to be forgiven and become one with us i'm dying on the cross so jesus has the power over angel armies and also today if you are afraid just ask god open my eyes let me see the chariot of fire all around me god will send his angels and that makes you to come out of every fear so we should always to ask that um, god please open my eyes isaiah 59:19 says when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him so keep up the faith keep up the faith ask god let me fight the good fight of the faith like first timothy we read the lady who touched his garment was healed everywhere jesus be touched he healed so today are you struggling with some disease which cannot be healed god can heal never fear for anything god is a god of miracles still two months back i want i got covid at that time i was filled with fear i thought i'm going to die because i saw many people dying on ventilator then god was telling me that he is going to be with me i have to be alone no one is there to drive me to the hospital i had to drive on my own alone i have to eat my food and i was uh, having chest pain so many problems but you know how god removed my fear when i was having going through covid i removed my um, whatsapp away for some time i started enjoying his presence i started to listen because i could not even sit and read the verses i listened to the word of god jeremiah i completed isaiah i completed so you know when you listen more again and again and you have a journal he i started writing down all my fears i wrote down and replaced it with faith so uh, how initially i said that i was full of fear fear of darkness and re some 5 years back when i felt something again i was uh, getting suffocated when i am alone in the dark i just told god god you are the one who told gave me this place and now if you don't help me out who will help and you know i felt his presence so much i started speaking in tongues and then i never felt any of those things again so you know this is the way god helps us to come out perfect love casts out fear why i wanted to tell this and finish this i forgot to tell because god has given each and every one of us some power that power is from holy spirit it is not in us we are not god we are just a flower fading away but during that short time god gives us holy spirit god gives us word of god and he wants us to use it to fight against fear let's pray precious heavenly father i give this time into your hands lord fill them with your praise father fill them with your power lord fill them with the knowledge of the character of god lord let them know that there is a god who will fight their battle if god is for us who can be against us and lord jesus open their eyes so that they will see the spiritual forces fighting for them on behalf of god lord jesus the angels sent on their behalf and lord jesus you are our support you are our everything you created the billions and trillions of galaxies and you are designing each and everything so beautifully lord we surrender each and every one who are here right now into your hands father if they are struggling with fear lord i rebuke that fear right now in the name of jesus let them be delivered in the same moment father because of your presence because of your love and lord the blood of jesus has the power to deliver anyone and lord jesus we claim the blood and lord help us to come out of every fear lord jesus i give all this blessed friends your children into your hands take control of your life be in their driver seat and let them enjoy their life looking at you lord jesus and doing what you want what you want to do father in the name of jesus i pray amen 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 thank you thank you so much uh, dear sister uh, lata christi i am truly blessed you know personally even i was uh, so touched by the kind of um, uh, way you presented the session i'm sure this is a, a season where we are going through a lot of tough times uh, and i'm sure um, as uh, sisters who have and brothers who have gathered here you have been uh, blessed uh, 
to be strong and bold and confident to overcome fear by faith 